who were the Askewden and what happened to them and how did native Munich German Jews relate to them? So the Austudent, as they were called and actually called themselves at the time, um, were East European Jews. And what the term usually signified for those Jews who did not have German citizenship, some of them were actually born already in Germany, but uh, you didn't have a birthright for citizenship at the time in Germany. So some of them were second generation, but most of them may be first generation who came from Galicia, which was Austria before World War I, who came from Hungary. Some of them came from Russia. Um, and in, 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 among the Jewish population of Munich, they counted about 20 to 25% of the population. Um, they were overall, not all of them, overall more traditional than the German Jews. Um, some of them spoke Yiddish, some of them still were Orthodox and had their Stiblach, their little shuls where they uh, would pray instead of the big synagogues. Um, uh, they often had little shops where they sold uh, goods and not the, the bigger and more established stores. Um, that was overall, and I'm generalizing obviously, the East European Jewish population um, of, of immigrants and their children. Um, how were they looked, to, uh, how were they seen by the German Jews or by the Munich Jews? I wouldn't generalize there either. Sure, there's a lot of like looking down on them. They're the poor brothers or cousins from the East. But there was also increasingly, even before World War I, but especially after World War I, a certain fascination with them. Um, it was led by somebody who also played a role, by the way, in Munich at the time, another important German Jewish philosopher, Martin Buber. Martin Buber popularized the Hasidic stories before World War I, and with this came a romanticization, or almost idealization of East European Jews as well, as the authentic Jews, as the real Jews. The Jews, German Jews, had one speed, maybe our great-grandfathers, they would say. Martin Buber played a role, just to mention that, because he was a very close friend of Gustav Landauer. And he visited Munich on the invitation of Landauer in February of 1919, um, he actually left the day, um, he, he only heard about this uh, on the train station on his way back, and the, the same day Eisner was assassinated. Uh, and he wrote to Landauer, he said, Landauer, you have to, um, you know, the, you know." he wrote in, in, not to Landauer, sorry, to his son-in-law, this is really a, uh, a, a huge, Jewish tragedy. Landauer told Buber, you have to write this story, the Jewish story of the revolution. And that's how they saw it. Landauer himself, unfortunately, was also brutally murdered uh, after the um, Second Council Republic um, was defeated in May of 1919. 